Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, so today it's going to be a four-card you pick oracle with a dyadic cross uh, finish. So we're going to use two different uh, sets of cards, uh, four card you pick, and uh, let's see where we go. So this is going to be a big experiment for me today because I'm using uh, two brand new sets of cards that I have never used before. They just came in and um, I'm not even sure how I'm going to go through this. So this could be a really, really long, uh, boring uh, video, just warning you ahead of time. But the first ones I got are uh, Doreen Virtue and Brian Weiss um, came up with these past life uh, oracle cards. Now these come to you with no instructions whatsoever. You've got a, a website that you can go to to kind of look up your pack and see how they suggest you use these cards. And I did that and it was, eh, you know, it was okay. It wasn't that great. Um, so they're a cheap little set of cards and I think I paid probably 25 bucks or more for these. Um, so, and, um, so there we are. And then the other ones are the Impressionist turn. I'll tell you about those in just a minute. So, these, um, will be our oracles. So these are the, the cards that we're going to pull to, uh, find out, uh, the four, uh, yes, no cards, or at least what kind of direction they're going to go in. Never used these cards before. I went through them very quickly. I'll let you take a look at them right now. Um, they're very interesting. Um, I don't have any idea how to use them. I mean, they don't follow any system, uh, that I'm familiar with. And uh, so we'll just see how they inspire us uh, to make that decision at the end of the at the end of the day. So interesting little cards. I feel like in the end, I just kind of gave some money to a church or something. Is uh, that I'm not sure if it was legitimate. So that's how I feel about them. But let's see how they work out. Hopefully, there was some good intention uh, in putting these together and coming up with these designs and. We'll see how it goes. So from these 44 cards, as a matter of fact, is what you get here. From these 44 cards, I had to wait for these too. I waited for like six weeks for these to come, I think. Um, uh, from these 44 cards, we're gonna pick four. So, for our yes, no cards. So what you need to do really is to uh, calm your, your mind, um, really uh, put your question forward uh, in your, you know, in your thoughts and see um, if we can't get our energy uh, synced up uh, through the collective consciousness. Obviously, we won't be doing this at the same time, but hopefully there'll be a string of uh, something out there that, that connects and, and brings you, or it makes these uh, cards be the ones to inspire you to find an answer to whatever this uh, issue is. So, one more cut. We'll spread them out and just get four. Just for this, uh, the yes, no cards of this uh, four card oracle. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this will be an experiment for, for me and for you. Okay, Past Life Oracle from Doreen Virtue. So we're going to put them out like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Pick your card. Now, you can stop the tape to pause for a minute if you need to get a little more clarity. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now we're going to turn them over one at a time and see how they inspire us uh, for this read. The first card, which will somehow either be a signifier for the, uh, the dyadic cross to follow or a um, uh, self-determining card. Uh, this is male-female. Huh. So as the first, if you pick number one, then the card that flips over for us here is male-female. And I want to say that I want to tend to think of these four cards in a sequence, in a sequence of uh, far away and uh, far ahead. So far away, far ahead, and in the middle, I want to consider these cards to be so, sort of representing um, issues uh, for now. So I don't know why I wanted to say that, but that's what I've got. So male, female. So this makes me think that um, this was an influence um, in the past um, that uh, is somehow significant in this issue that you have. So that's uh, how that one seems to me. This, If you pick the number two card, then uh, this card is Celtic. 
And you know what this card says to me is that we need to have faith in the uh, dyadic cross that we're about to do. And I may even finish this one out to a Celtic cross. Uh, we'll see. But uh, and Celtic is uh, old knowledge. Uh, I guess. And look, and now you can, oh, this is very nice to see the Celtic cross here. So you see the cross in the middle, the signifier and the challenge, and then the uh, four cards around it uh, represent this circle, which is uh, the uh, past, the, uh, or rather the base, the past, the sky, and the future. And then the, this uh, line right here would represent the um, uh, self, the environment, and the hopes and fears, and the final outcome. Uh, so, uh, of course, I've got a uh, modified Celtic cross that I use uh, with the cards in all sorts of weird positions uh, oppo as opposed to this, uh, but uh, the meanings uh, work out. So Celtic, old knowledge, and um, this is uh, a very recent uh, influence uh, in this uh, issue that you brought uh, to the cards. So if you pick number three, then, uh, this one is High Priest or Priestess. High Priest or Priestess. And I'm going to say this is something that we... Um, that is, is an influence for you to seek um, to help uh, get to the root of this issue. High priest or priestess. So I say just look to your higher self because we all are all, all of this ourselves. So you want to look to your higher self. You really want to stop, stop, stop and uh, take a deep breath and use that to try to focus in on uh, whatever this is. And then the number four card, if that's the one you picked, is a scribe or writer. And so it could be, since because I'm considering this to be in our, our far... Uh, or more distant future, uh, scribe or writer, something that uh, that uh, remains as uh, evidence uh, of um, whatever this issue may be uh, in the future. So um, there we go. So I don't know. Like I said, there's no rote uh, descriptions that I found for these cards, and so that's just what I'm going to assign to them. Now, this right here, I'm uh, thrilled and really disappointed with this card. These cards at the same time. So what these are, these are Impressionist Tarot. And I thought, that's exactly what I've been looking for. I've been looking for someone who's taken actual art that we could recognize uh, in a museum and somehow worked it out for the tarot. And that's exactly what these two have done. So this is Corrine Kenner and artwork by Arturo Pica. And if I understand correctly, they've taken Van Gogh, they've taken Degas, they've taken uh, Monet uh, and Manet, and they've <clears throat> taken their paintings and they've added something to them to make the interpretation uh, relevant to the tarot, and it's really amazing. It's, they pulled it off really well. It's a fantastic idea. Even the cards are cute on the back, you're going to see. But the quality, although this box is great, I mean, this is one of the boxes that I love, and I damaged it when I was opening it up because I used some scissors to dig through it and I had to take it back together. But nice box, you know, I love those uh, magnetic boxes, however. And even though the book, and look, fantastic, even though the book is amazing, it's a color, super color, well written, easy to read, lots of thought went into this. It's a little novel, really, uh, if you take the time to read it. And I started uh, going through it. And, and then the cards uh, are a little disappointing. But even before you get to the cards, this whole thing just was all crumpled out and fell out and not secured into this. So I didn't realize that this is a, a paper device that is that's folded like origami to come into this shape. And then uh, I, and all the other cards I have, I guess they, they blew them in. Uh, properly and this one was just all loose and bent all poorly and it just looked cheap and falling apart and i had to figure out how it goes back together and actually tape it inside the box so big disappointment big disappointment and then the cards let's talk about those impressionist tarot i still recommend them even though i got these beefs on them right now so the cards fantastic i mean look at the at the uh paintings here i mean these are uh, paintings that you can go get an art book and look up and say, oh yeah, that's that, and then see what the difference is that this um, Arturo Pica has made to make these cards relevant, because I don't know my art very well. If you're an art major, probably you do. But um, they're beautiful, famous, uh, easily recognizable pieces of art that they've transferred uh, to, to work with the Rider weight system, if I can figure it out. So, because coins and swords and pentacles and um, all of that... It's just uh, not, uh, may not be that obvious, uh, but we'll see. Never used these before, um, so we'll see how it goes. This will be a whole, as a matter of fact, uh, who knows, it might not even air because it's so bad. <laughs> so, so these are our four cards that we start with. Those are your four questions. And then the back, oh, I didn't show you the back. So the back even looks like the back of a, of a, art so you know that you'd hang on the wall either the frame and the little hook at the top and a uh, little uh, tape where it's fastened in or yeah i mean it's they're really clever 
uh, cards, but the problem is they're cheap. They're really cheap, and uh, the the finish could be really these pictures deserve to be so much better than they are. But man, somebody's going to take this and do better, I think. But this is it. This is certainly on the way. Anyway, now that I've ranted long enough, I wonder if I should cut some of that out before I publish this. I probably should. Maybe even cut out this part talking about cutting some out. But um, so I've looked through them. I've shuffled them around a bit. I've had these about a day, and I've had the other smaller ones there for uh, less than a day. And uh, so I just thought, well, let's get this done. Let's see what kind of a, a reading they give us. So we'll, we'll give it a shot. So I'm going to take uh, six out, out of here for this first one of male, female. So we'll take this one right here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. And then for these, we'll leave that right there. Male, female will, they even call these signifiers, but it will be, um, you know, relevant to, to this, uh, issue in in the distant past okay we got one two three four five six cards here we'll go ahead and lay those out and start with the divination so the signifier then if you've got this male female uh, as somehow significant in the issue that you're dealing with in your past uh, the signifier for this then okay this is going to be the the there is no 11 of swords so what is it oh this is justice this is justice excuse me Okay, so yeah, so this is Justice. You see uh, Justice is balancing the scales with uh, Truth, the Sword of Truth uh, in her lap. And one hand on that, one hand on the scales. And so the signifier of this uh, male and female here is uh, there's some justice, could be even an injustice, uh, that's, uh, that's at work here. Okay, the um, challenge to this Justice right here, then, is the Two of Cups. And so the, the, the cups are, are uh, passion and the emotion, and they're represented in this painting by these two pools of uh, this, these reflecting ponds. So the two cups, and so and the two cups indicates uh, partnerships and uh, even lovers and uh, a close uh, working situation uh, over uh, some sort of emotional or, or passionate or important issue. So the, the challenge to this justice is the passion for this, um, for this issue. Okay, now the basis of this reading then is the Eight of Swords, and the Eight of Swords is clearly, you know, just being uh, felt trapped, uh, almost ready to be burned at the stake uh, by the uh, perilous uh, truths, justices, injustices, uh, rules, uh, laws even, that are surrounding this issue. So that's where we're at with that. Okay, I'm going to go on to the recent past. The recent past in this one is the Five of Cups. The Five of Cups. And I had the hardest time seeing these cups. Uh, they're, they're obviously right here. One, two, three, four, five. And the Five of Cups is often um, worrying uh, over uh, something that's been missed, uh, some opportunity that's been lost. And um, so um, this is obvious, that would be our emotional situation. And uh, so that's the recent past for this uh, male-female part of this Dianic Cross. And then the, uh, in the sky for this one is the Three of Cups. And the Three of Cups is really uh, celebrations. You know, you've got three full cups here on a moonlit night uh, waiting uh, to be drunk. So um, so that's what's in the sky for this, really celebrations. And um, so now male, male and female seems to be becoming more relevant. And then in the uh, likely outcome of these cards, and I just love how they look like uh, the backs of paintings. But anyway, the likely outcome of this card is the, uh, oh, the High Priestess. Wow, that's very interesting. So we start out with justice, and the um, likely outcome for this has to do with the high priestess. The high priestess, obviously, is um, is all-knowing, rules, really righteousness. You can see this uh, high priestess is uh, dressed in white with the, the fire of action uh, behind her in this beautiful kind of autumn field of, uh, of whatever this fruitful uh, wheat or whatever we have behind her is. This is just a beautiful painting. I've got to, <laughs> it tells you that booklet exactly where these paintings are. So, you know, now I have to go back every time I do a reading and look them up. So let's see if I can put this back together. And these, this is going to be a really long four card reading. So um, the, the male and female past of this had to do with uh, justice uh, challenged by, uh, you know, a, a pair of emotion feeling trapped in the, as the basis of the whole thing. Uh, and a missed opportunity, and uh, but coming to an uh, hopefully a celebration uh, um, 
by doing the right thing, what we always know is right. And we are our own the high priestess. We know what's right. We know what's just. Okay. So there we are with that. I'm going to leave those out and um, go on to the next one. So Celtic. So for this, this one says to me that, you know what, I'm not going to leave those out either, that um, this is an old world issue, but may have recent in recent past come to um, come to uh, attention for somehow. An old world could be a previous generation. It could be um, literally ancient, uh, or it could be maybe a previous uh, um, job even, you know. But it's old news, uh, Celtic, old news that's um, causing the rift in this issue that we have right here. Okay, so we're going to take six cards out of here. This will be one, two, three, four, five, and again, that one right on the end for six. Okay, we'll put these up here to watch over that, and then get right into this read. Uh, and try to move this along a little bit. So Celtic is the is the signifier of this uh, reading, and the signifier of this cross then is going to be the King of Cups. And uh, so again, cups are emotion, power. If you're the King of Cups, you are the guy who's in charge of this passionate situation, and uh, you're going to carry it through. Some people like to say the Benign King, uh, thinking is somewhat weak, but I like to say that uh, this is the King who's looking out for the deeper uh, issue here. Uh, governed somehow by um, some old world feeling or some old feeling. The challenge to this king then in this reading is the, huh, is the, is this the queen of, uh, yeah, the queen of, of wands. So the queen of wands, um, wow, that's interesting. The king of cups is challenged by the queen of action, of motion, of planning, of moving, of getting things done. I mean, she can certainly be a thorn in the side of a compassionate king. Huh. That's very interesting. So the challenge for this uh, emotional king is this uh, queen uh, wanting to get these things in, almost the queen of thorns. Basis of this reading then is strength. Um, yeah, it's just it just takes strength. Um, and I think the strength is going to have to come, interestingly enough, from this king because this uh, queen of thorns has enough strength. Uh, so yeah, tame the beast, find some calm, uh, look for uh, the strength uh, that this is going to require. And then the uh, recent past of this is going to be okay what are you this is the six of what the six of swords it is one two three four five six swords right there so the six of swords is uh, moving on um uh from troubled waters now we don't have troubled waters here but we certainly do have moving on uh, reminiscent of the little canals uh, throughout uh, england and um so very interesting card to have in the recent past moving on so this recently inspired by some sort of forward motion uh, in the sky for this reading is um, the Ace of Wands. And you know, you think of an Ace as a really strong card, but this wand instead is a walking stick, which makes you think of a cripple. But in fact, uh, it does give uh, anyone who uses a walking stick, gives them that extra crutch to help boost them forward. So maybe this Ace of Wands is just that extra little bump that we need uh, to get through this issue. And then the uh, likely outcome of this then is the Ten of Coins. And um, the Ten of Coins is like happy family, like everything's great. You know, this is it's represented here by these, uh, I'm going to say cornflowers, but whatever these flowers are lined up around this, uh, this um, it could be an aqueduct, could just be a bridge. Um, so yeah, happy family. So this sounds like with a lot of thought uh, that this will uh, work out absolutely perfectly well. Okay, so that was for Celtic. So we'll go on now to High Priest or Priestess. That's very interesting. I think, and I want to, gosh, I hope this doesn't turn out to be a super long video. Um, so I'll try to rush through it. First time I've ever used either of these cards. So we'll see how you guys feel about that. Okay, so we're going to shuffle these up just quickly, cut them, try to do a riffle shuffle. Okay, spread them out and get six cards for high priest or high priestess. So this is going to be one, two, Three, four, five, and six. Okay, so put these back to over that fourth issue and look at high priest or high priestess. Uh, so this is uh, looking for uh, guidance. 
uh, in our in our future situation, our, our close future situation that's coming up. That's what this is about: looking for guidance uh, in that regard. So the signifier of this of this uh, dyadic cross then is the fool. So if you're looking for guidance, obviously you're about to start off on a journey, and that's exactly what's happening for for this fool here. He's starting off uh, walking on top of this wall, and uh, he could fall at some length on this side, or he could tumble into a bed of uh, flower flower bed on this side. So uh, the fool uh, off on his uh, foolhardy journey, I suppose, high priest or priestess. So the uh, challenge to that then is going to be the six of wands, and you know the six of wands. <coughs> is, is uh, significant of celebrations, of having won the day. And so he's got these fellows lined up, uh, paying homage to him while he celebrates uh, with his wand aloft. And so the challenge to this is the celebration of the victory. Could get you a little uh, overexcited and, and you can tumble off that wall. And you, know, you don't want to tumble off either way. There's a deep way to go here or there's a way to uh, fall off in the flowers, but you know you don't want to be, tumble off at all. So either way is not uh, idyllic. So um, the base of this reading then is the Eight of Cups. So the Eight of Cups. So the, you see these cups are all lined up in a row here. So this is really having uh, plenty here um, to 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 show um, your value, I would say. So that's the base of this reading, is really having had just plenty enough. And then the recent past of this is the uh, King of Swords. So the King of Swords, now this is a very determined, very stern looking King of Swords. I mean, he is in a, a rock solid chair uh, made of uh, huge hewn uh, lumber with a sturdy sword. He's got a wand of a fiery uh, planning over here and uh, he's not hindered at all about getting up and getting this done. So that's the, the recent past then of this reading. Um, and then the uh, sky for this is the Knight of Pentacles. And so the Knight of Pentacles is very comfortable and confident in his position uh, in this issue. He's uh, ready to uh, move forward with some elegance and uh, command the situation. Uh, that's how uh, confident uh, you could be uh, in the outcome of this, which is going to be the final outcome is the King of Wands. And so that's the King of Action, getting it done. This King has gone out to the balcony. He's showing the folks that this is what the plan, this is how this is going to work. And so just uh, this journey that's about to start here um, uh, started with strength and uh, is ending uh, with strength also. So that's that one. And then finally, finally, the last, the last uh, oracle card here to get some sort of uh, fleshing out is going to be the scribe or writer. Scribe or writer. Scribe or writer. So if you pick number four, and that's what we're talking about now, scribe or writer. You know, that's some future legacy almost. It could be a, a lease or a, a plan that's going to have a, a date of uh, efficacy or uh, expiration in the future. Scribe or writer. It could just be a message. It could just be a love note to somebody. You know, it could just be a, a, any sort of message that comes in the future. But scribe or writer. We're going to give this a quick cut and jump right in to this one. We want six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Scribe or writer. Interesting. The signifier card for this is going to be the seven of swords. You know, the seven of swords is typically, you know, sort of like a thief in the night. And uh, it is night in this card, and this guy does have these swords slung over his shoulder. So it's it's a it's a, a feeling of a betrayal, you know, or or betraying. Uh, so uh, I guess we want to think about is that the sort of message we want to leave? Uh, could think of it that way. Uh, the challenge to that betrayal then is um, the two of swords, and the two. Well, yeah, of course, the two of swords is deciding which way uh, you're going to go, you know. And I always like to think. <clears throat> Think of these as truth and justice, but it may just be uh, some other ways that uh, you could go. Uh, okay, and then the basis of this reading then is the Five of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles is um, typically, you know, sort of downtrodden, uh, looking for a way in. But this Five of Pentacles shows us inside the church. You know, there's a massive uh, musical uh, also concert going on inside here, um, inside these uh, beautiful windows. So this Five of Pentacles. I'm wondering uh, how um, this uh, is going to feel 
um, like a desperation. And that's the base of the reading. Um, the past of this reading is the Seven of uh, Pentacles. And the Seven of Pentacles is always wondering, have I done enough? And you can see it's represented here in these seven flowers. She's uh, uh, taming her, her mane here. And I'm sure uh, ladies are always wondering, do I have it done properly? So worrying over some uh, self um, some self issue, uh, maybe some selfish or some self-worth um, issue. Uh, and then uh, in the sky here, we have the six. The six. Oh, the lovers. Of course it is. Yeah, so in the sky we have the lovers. This is a very emotional reading, actually. So we have the lovers here in the sky. So that's either actual lovers or pairings or unions or partnerships um, uh, with lots of passion really just spewing out. And uh, so this is an issue that really uh, has can go a long way. And uh, th again, this has to do with uh, scribes. So this could even be uh, a, a legacy of grandchildren. Um, so there's that. And then the likely uh, outcome of this Ah, is the Ten of Swords, and the Ten of Swords is, is typically really just the very end of the journey. And um, and let's see, let's lay this down and see how this might all work out. Because we did start out with the Seven, it was about the Scribes, okay, Scribes are writing. And we start out with the Seven of Swords, which is a, a betrayal to a huge effect. Uh, having to know which, is challenged by having to know which way to go, which is all underpinned by um, the help that we seek uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a union. Um, in the past, there might have been some feeling of uh, insecurity, and then in the in the sky, here we have potential. I think is the key here: potential partnerships, and um, and uh, sad to say that uh, at the end of the cycle, you know what? This looks to me like the beginning of a romance, and uh, and at the end of it. Uh, so I don't know. So I hope all that was uh, useful to someone in trying to figure out how that, what this means for you. And I'm sorry. That I couldn't make it clearer. But those were the uh, four cards today. The male, female for number one, Celtic for number two, high priest or priestess for number three, and the scribe or writer for number four. Well, there we go. So two new sets of cards. Uh, I don't know if that made any sense or not. So you let me know. And um, I'll tell you what, come back tomorrow. I'll be here and we'll take some other cards and we'll go somewhere where maybe we'll know the route. So I'm Mark, this is my journey through tarot. Come tomorrow and ciao for now.